Bye. Oui. Hey. Uh, I can hear you. Uh, I can hear you. Uh, can you hear me?喂。喂，喂，喂，喂，哎，刚才喂，能听见吗？喂喂喂喂，能听见？喂，听不见了吗？喂喂喂！哎，这怎么有一个多余的？喂，天阳能听见我说话吗？见了，我我能
喂喂喂，喂，能听见吗？能听见。嗯。刚才可能是我的网不好，你共享。这个，行，摄像头反正就这样吧。那个，能共享吧？共享一下哦。嗯。能看见我屏幕吧？啊，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以。嗯、好，没问题。嗯。姐，然后我我我这边也共享一下。嗯。也<咳>可以吗？哎，我我还没停止共享啊。好了，那个可以了，嗯，可以看见。那你你不是共享你整个屏幕是吧？我是共，我感觉你好像只共享你这个窗口哎，你要共享整个屏幕吧？共享整个屏幕，看得到吗？啊，我全屏了，我全屏了。哦哦哦，好好，行。现在看到吧？然后我 F 十一全屏了。可以看到，可以看到，嗯嗯，行。那这样的我那先静音了啊。啊啊不是宝哥，我们要退出来，然后这为啥要退出来？喂让它重新开始录，已经开始录了，我们都退出来，然后有那要那要退出来是吗？喂，你这网络好像不行哎。喂
。喂，海林。喂，海林 ，Could you hear me？ 黑宝哥，你可以听到吗？能听到，能听到。OK， 我也可以听到。宝哥，你待会也记得。手机如果有微信，看一下，就是如果你出现了一些断网啊什么的，到时候会提醒你。好的，好的。Hey, hi everyone. Hi. We'll probably give a minute or two for folks to join, and then maybe we can get started. Also, while we're here, I put the agenda doc in the chat so we can add ourselves to the attendees list. Uh, hi, Rajesh. Do we uh, do we need to wait someone, or can I start right now? Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, we can get started. Uh, 
how would you like to go about it ever like would you like to share your screen and present it okay i will share my screen cool Uh, so, uh, so uh, you can see the screen now. My screen now, right? Okay, I will start. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, my name is uh, Abel Fong from uh, Huawei Cloud, and uh, I'd like to uh, make the introduction of the, our, our project Quasar, and we're going to make a sandbox application uh, to CNCF. Uh, so first, please allow me to make a brief introduction and the motivation for uh, for us to make this project. Uh, so first, I think the container is actually uh, more of a specification uh, than the technology uh, right now, uh, as we have the, uh, the, the specifications and the interfaces uh, like OCI, CRI, CSM, CNI. So uh, the, um, the container is not just the a, a, a technology that uh, is not just uh, some process running inside the namespace and uh, constrained by the C group. Actually, more isolation techniques are connecting into the container world right now. Uh, we have the uh, hypervisor, uh, WebAssembly, a BB kernel, Unit kernel, or computational computing. All of them can be a sandbox to run the containers in it. And uh, um, so uh, the sandbox, I have to say that the sandbox is becoming more and more important. But actually, um, uh, it is an uh, obstacle in the container runtimes. Uh, we don't uh, have a notion, uh, such, an, uh, such a notion of uh, sandbox in container runtime. And this brings some problems. Uh, first, uh, uh, as we know that we have the sandbox definition in CRI, uh, as we have, uh, for example, we have the uh, run port sandbox or remove port sandbox uh, CRI core. But for uh, but the container runtimes has no such definition, so um, uh, so it has to create the uh, so-called the post container to mimic a sandbox, uh, which brings uh, uh, the, the overhead of memory, or uh, we also have to prepare such a, a image of the uh, uh, post container, and uh, uh, and also we have for uh, we have we need to a uh, machine process for every container. Um, of course, uh, um, when in the shim v2, we only need the um, port for a, a, a shim process for uh, each port. But uh, uh, if a set of ports can expose the task API itself, then uh, maybe we can uh, remove the shim process. Um, for the task API, this is a, uh, the con container D. Uh, this is what for container D to uh, manage the uh, container to do the container life circle management. They use the task API. And, uh, and so uh, actually uh, the sandbox management is, is uh, uh, currently mixed into the task API. So uh, this makes the logic very um, messy in the, in the uh, 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 shim codes. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, first, please may allow me to make a brief introduction of the, uh, the history from the shim to sandbox API. As, uh, as we know that in the early days, the sh uh, we have a shim process for every container in Docker. So uh, even for the post container, we need a, a shim process. So this makes many shim process running on the host to run containers. And um, and so we uh, we then go to the shim v2. Uh, the, for the shim v2, we only have a, uh, we don't need a shim process for a port. So this reduces many uh, shim processes, but uh, uh, but still, um, we, we as we don't have the sandbox API, so we have to uh, uh, we have we we need to create a post container inside the, this uh, sandbox, and uh, uh, still we need some uh, we need uh, to bring many uh, uh, memory overhead, uh, and uh, so uh, at last the the, the community, uh, community has merged the sandbox API. I think this the merging of the sandbox API has. Uh, uh, change something that uh, the sandbox becomes uh, the first class citizen in the container world now, so so that we don't need the post container anymore, um, and uh, uh, so that this uh, and uh, this, the, the 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 APIs, the sandbox API and task API uh, are split, and uh, it won't won't mix together. Um, 
but in the current day, uh, but in the current uh, implementation, uh, the shim processes still the carry of the sandbox, both uh, sandbox and the task APIs. Uh, so that um, uh, actually for some uh, kind of uh, uh, sandbox, uh, actually they can expose the task API itself. Uh, but if we have a shim process here, it need to do the API conversion and the proxy. Uh, for example, for the micro VM based, uh, uh, sandbox, the, the, there is an agent running inside the the virtual machine, <clears throat> and um, uh, it and it can actually the expose the task API directly, and uh, can uh, can call the task API through the Unix domain socket or or the uh, WSOC. But uh, uh, but in the current implementation, uh, we need a shim process to do the API conversion and and proxy. So um, that's actually what we want to do. We want to make a uh, uh, cleaner architecture and uh, to uh, uh, make a uh, uh, make a clean architecture to uh, r r remove this uh, 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 this shim uh, conversion of of, pro of proxy. Uh, so so before we are doing this, we uh, want to make a clear definition of uh, what a sandbox is. Uh, so, uh, so uh, because uh, in I, I think in uh, in my opinion, I think. Uh, if we uh, can make a, a clear definition of uh, entity in the system, then uh, we will make a, a clean architecture of the system. So, um, so this is our definition of the sandbox. I think it's a uh, it's an isolated environment to run tasks in it. So this definition is abstract. Actually, uh, we don't uh, uh, define uh, the the format of the sandbox. If if we need the uh, a process uh, uh, in the sandbox or not, and uh, uh, we, we just don't define it. It can be a black box for us. Can it be? Can they don't need to know uh, anything about this uh, sandbox? They just uh, uh, they don't care if it's a process or or a uh, a thread or even maybe it can be a, a remote host. It just can uh, uh, can get an address to call the task API to the sandbox to run the containers in it. Uh, so uh, as we uh, don't define anything about uh, uh, any uh, concrete implementation of this uh, sandbox, so it can be highly integrated. Actually, for the most scenarios, um, it can be one process or even uh, one thread for a one sandbox. Um, and so uh, as the sandbox cannot manage itself inside it, uh, uh, to do, it cannot manage the life cycle or resource inside it. So. We have we need someone outside to do the management. For the someone outside, we uh, name it a, a sandboxer. Actually, in our design, the sandboxer is the uh, carrier of the sandbox API. So it, it will expo uh, uh, expose the uh, sandbox API to container D. And so with this, I think it's a cleaner uh, architecture. So that uh, when Kennedy want to create container, they just the first uh, they what they do is to call the sandbox API to a sandboxer to prepare a sandbox for it, and then uh, they will get an address, and the, and then they can uh, call the task API through this address to uh, run containers in it. So uh, this sandboxer uh, becomes important in our design. So I, I will make a detail a detailed introduction of uh, what a sandboxer is. Uh, so uh, in our design, the sandboxer uh, is uh, for the life circle and resource management of a kind of a sandboxes. So for example, a micro VM sandboxer can manage the uh, the micro VM sandboxes and for WebAssembly sandbox, so it can be a, uh, uh, it can uh, uh, manage uh, the uh, WebAssembly sandboxes. Uh, so a sandbox is a uh, plugin of uh, Canon D or Isla D or the Creo. Uh, maybe in the future it can be a plugin of uh, Creo. So um, so that uh, it, it actually it's a, uh, uh, a runtime container. It also can be seen as a uh, container runtime. And uh, actually, uh, uh, we have proposed this uh, sandbox plugin feature request in the container D community, and it is uh, already in the container D uh, 2.0 milestone. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as in our design, and every, any isolation techniques can uh, meeting the following conditions can be a, a sandboxer. Uh, first, it can uh, make an isolated environment. Of course, this is necessary, and then. Um, uh, this uh, created uh, uh, isolated environment or the sandbox can uh, can be reached from the container D. So it can be reached for, uh, in any uh, in any uh, format. Like we can 
so the, the address can be a uh, TCP or a uh, Unix domain socket or we socket. You just uh, need to let the content be to connect it. And uh, we have to implement, we have, maybe we need a process to implement the sandbox API to, to, to uh, uh, serve the sandbox API server, uh, the gRPC server for sandbox live circle management. So with these three things, we can get the sandboxer. And uh, we have uh, uh, two optional requirement. Uh, first is that uh, it has, uh, it maybe they have uh, need to need the ability to add or re uh, remove the resources from a sandbox uh, dynamically. Because uh, when we want to start a container or remove a container, we may need to uh, uh, add resource or remove resource from the sandbox dynamically. But actually, I think it's optional because we can maybe we can calculate the total resource uh, resource requirement uh, for a sandbox. Uh, uh, by uh, uh, adding all of the uh, uh, the resources uh, uh, of all of the containers together, uh, uh, so uh, it's, so this is an optional requirement. And another optional requirement is to do the image management inside the sandbox, so that uh, the sandbox can uh, uh, pull the image inside the sandbox. I think this is important for the uh, confidential computing because um, we don't need to, we don't want others to. Uh, see the content of the image outside the sandbox. So uh, we need the we need sandbox to pull the image or or do the to the lazy loading of the sandbox uh, to the to uh, lazy loading of the image inside the sandbox. Uh, so uh, with this uh, uh, clarification of the sandbox and the sandboxer, uh, now we can introduce our project Quasar. Uh, it is a, it is the uh, Quasar which uh, start with the Q word. Uh, uh, in in Kubernetes and it's low level container runtime uh, that provides multiple sandboxers to manage different kinds of sandboxes. Uh, so first, it's a Rust framework. Uh, we we built a Rust framework to provide the sandbox implementation to container D, Docker, Isla D, or or Creole. And uh, we have built some uh, send, uh, a set of sandboxers based on this framework. Currently, we have implemented the micro VM sandboxer, uh, ABB kernel sandbox, and the WebAssembly sandboxer. And uh, sorry, and I think uh, we have uh, these three uh, advantages of uh, of our project the Quasar. Uh, first, I think uh, it is a unified sandbox abstraction, so that uh, any is uh, isolation technique can can be a sandboxer uh, in our, in Quasar. Uh, uh, just uh, follow the uh, uh, our uh, APIs. And the next thing is that uh, it is easy for us to do to. Deploy multiple uh, sandbox containers in on the same host. Uh, I think this is important for our, for the mixed uh, uh, deployment for uh, maybe uh, online service and and batch services. Uh, we have to uh, maybe uh, we need a, a strong uh, isolation for them, so we need a, a, a strongly uh, isolated sandboxes. And for the uh, and the third is that uh, we made a, a optimized framework based on the Rust language to reduce the uh, memory footprint and uh, and to to make a higher uh, performance and uh, also we made a clean uh, architecture to reduce the the memory footprint of uh, of uh, the, the 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 shim process and uh, also the API conversion of proxying things. Uh, so these are these are our advantages of uh, these are the advantages of our project. Um, and, and then I'd like to uh, introduce uh, two sandboxers uh, uh, of our project. First is this uh, micro VM sandboxer. So uh, for a micro VM sandboxer, uh, a, a micro VM is a sandbox. And the first, the first process running inside the virtual machine uh, is a task API server. And it will expose the task API to container D through the resoc or Unix domain socket. Uh, so that uh, the community can uh, run containers inside the virtual machine through this uh, API core. And uh, 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 the VMM sandbox or it can be a uh, process running uh, uh, on the host, a single process running. And this responsibility is to launch and stop the virtual machines and uh, call the API to hot plug or hot unplug the, the devices. Uh, of the virtual machine. So for the QMU, maybe you had to call the uh, QMP command, and for the uh, cloud hypervisor, it just call the REST API uh, to do the, uh, uh, the, the resource dynamic uh, uh, management.
uh, and so uh, uh, we have made a, uh, a performance test uh, about the startup time and uh, memory overhead uh, and compare it with, with the existing uh, uh, micro VM uh, 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 micro VM based uh, container runtime, uh, which is Kata. And uh, for the uh, startup time, we uh, built a built, uh, 50 uh, port. We run parallel uh, startup uh, 50 ports in parallel and to uh, record the, the, the start of a time. And we, uh, we have, as we have seen here, that um, we, uh, we can get a, uh, uh, nearly one second that uh, all of the uh, ports uh, started. And for the kata, it, it costs uh, 1.8 seconds. So uh, it's, a, it's an improvement uh, of the start of time. And for the memory overhead, uh, as we uh, as a Kata has a, a shim process for every port, so the uh, memory overhead is uh, um, is increasing along with the, the number of the port. Uh, but for the quasar, uh, we we just need uh, one single process. So uh, actually, the uh, uh, the memory overhead almost do not change along with this uh, number of the ports. So uh, we can save almost. Uh, 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 one gigabyte of the memory when we uh, run uh, 50 ports on the host. So I think this is important for the uh, if we uh, deploy uh, for the high density of deployment and for those uh, uh, devices that uh, uh, that is memory constraint like the IoT devices. <clears throat> and uh, mm, uh, and the next uh, uh, sandbox is the Wasm sandbox that I want to introduce. That um, uh, so uh, when we uh, implement the uh, Wasm sandbox, we have some undetermined uh, choices. Uh, first is the uh, whether we use the process or thread to, to be a sandbox. So for the for when we uh, implemented the sand, Wasm sandbox based on the Wasm Edge, we actually uh, fork a new process and and run the Wasm Edge uh, inside the newly created process. Uh, so it's just a process based, and uh, when we um, implement the, uh, this uh, uh, Wasm sandbox in uh, by the Wasm time, uh, actually we start the Wasm time inside the uh, Wasm sandbox process itself. So this can be a uh, uh, can be reduced can reduce the uh, uh, start of latency, but um, I think it, it makes it hard to uh, do the resource uh, limitation because uh, uh, for the um, was a match it, because it's a unique process running on the host, so we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, limit the CPU and the memory by the C group on the host. But for uh, wasm time um, because it's running as uh, it do not have a single process running, so. Uh, we have to rely on the ability of the wasm time to limit uh, CPU and uh, memory. And another thing that is not that de de determined is the uh, the format of the WebAssembly image. Uh, we we actually do not have a standard. Actually, uh, we can uh, add uh, we can uh, uh, only add the uh, package the single module fire uh, to uh, to the image. As an image, so that when we unpack the, uh, the the image, we can get the, the content of the, the module file. But uh, another um, another way to do is to uh, uh, add uh, directly to the to the uh, image, so that uh, the module file, the main module file, is a is a file in the directory. Uh, we choose this directly uh, in, uh, implementation because I think. Um, uh, maybe uh, the main module file need to uh, has some dependency of the other module files they have to pack packing together in the same uh, image or, or maybe we have some uh, uh, config files so they have to pack together so uh, we choose this directly and uh, we choose directly to be a, a, a WebAssembly image and uh, uh, we, uh, the customers can uh, specify the uh, name of the main module file. Uh, by the com uh, by specifying the command in the uh, pod YAML. Uh, and the next thing is the resource limitation. Uh, as, uh, as we said before that uh, some uh, uh, WebAssembly runtime has the ability to uh, limit the, the resources, the CPU and memory, but for some uh, uh, runtime, they don't have the ability. So this is not uh, 
we cannot uh, have a standard action to to do the resource limitation and maybe in the future uh, we will get a, a, a standard of the uh, web assembly runtime maybe and we can uh, make a standard action and uh, of uh, and the last thing is that uh, mount uh, the mount uh, of the uh, container uh, of uh, or the socket of the container, uh, because the WebAssembly has a uh, capability-based security, so um, they have to. We have to open it before we start the uh, was runtime and uh, define the pre-open uh, pre-open the the, the, the uh, uh, file descriptors. And this is a, we all for. I think this can be done for all the WebAssembly runtime. So this is our implementation of the uh, Wasm sandboxer. And uh, uh, the next, uh, I, uh, uh, I, I will make a deduction of this, uh, uh, the current situation of our community. Uh, so first, this is uh, our, our website and we uh, put our codes in the, uh, on the GitHub and we already get uh, more than 800 stars and uh, uh, the contributors are from Huawei, Agriculture Bank of China, Second State, Open Neura, uh, Quarksoft, and Zhengcai Cloud. Uh, we have uh, uh, 12 maintainers across five independent companies, and uh, we are under the license of FH2. And next, we uh, want to I want to introduce two uh, user adoptions of uh, our project. The first is a, a fast platform. Actually, uh, this is a, a start startup company uh, which is named Mengning, and uh, it's building a fast platform based on WebAssembly. And uh, it wants to uh, uh, replace the Runcy container with a WebAssembly to deploy functions without warming up. Uh, as we know that uh, the fast platform uh, need uh, require a, a, an extreme uh, uh, an extreme startup latency low startup latency for, for deploying the functions. And uh, <clears throat> the startup time for the Runcy container do not fit do not uh, fit the requirements. So uh, for most of the fast platform, they will warm up some containers to speed up the start, start of the, uh, the, the, the functions. Um, but uh, this uh, company want to uh, uh, do it in a different way. They want to use WebAssembly to to, to start the, to deploy the functions directly, and uh, uh, they are they want to use the was match to do the resource limitation and statistic report in the function level. They are using Quasar uh, to reduce the memory overhead and the startup latency and and uh, to reduce the startup latency of function instances. Uh, this project is uh, still under the development and. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, actually, our community has received many issues from them. Uh, next uh, uh, adoption is the uh, CC Turbo on Huawei Cloud. Uh, the CCE is a, is a service, uh, and it's short for the uh, container, uh, a cloud container engine. It is actually a Kubernetes service running on Huawei Cloud. Uh, we can. Uh, the, the, the users can uh, create a Kubernetes master and uh, uh, manage uh, uh, some uh, nodes uh, as a uh, Kubernetes node, uh, some, some machine as a Kubernetes node, so that they can deploy their uh, workloads in this uh, master, uh, in, in this uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, so the CC, the CC Turbo is a turbo version of CC. We have enhanced the, uh, the network and the storage and, and uh, and the runtime performance of uh, C, uh, the Kubernetes on the node. Uh, so uh, for the runtime, uh, we have uh, we uh, we can uh, the, the users can uh, uh, manage a, a bare metal machine as a node, so that they can uh, run the multiple sandbox containers running on this uh, on this on this node, so that uh, we can make a, a mixed deployment of the online and batch service. To remove the resource limitation, uh, utilization of the cluster, and uh, as as uh, they are this uh, sandbox container, so that it's strongly isolated, uh, maybe it's by hypervisor or WebAssembly or BB kernel. Uh, I think uh, they all ha have a strong isolation uh, than the containers uh, implemented in Rasi. Uh, so uh, we have a demonstration, and uh, uh, is a. Um, 
So uh, Tianyang will, will, will show this uh, demo. Uh, is Tianyang online? Yeah, so, uh, yes, I will, yes. Uh, I'll give my, I will give my screen, uh, give up my screen to Tianyang. Um, so before we move on to the demo, I just had a couple of questions. Um, is that okay if I can ask them now? Or would you want to have it after the demo? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, can I, I just had a few questions. Can I ask them now? Uh, maybe uh, okay, 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 okay. Of course, of course, it's okay. Uh, so I was looking at the project, and it looks like. Um, Do I have to uh, share the project? The, the still share the project so that you can uh, you can say that which 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 page do, do I stop to to show your uh, question? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think that would okay. Be. Okay. Um, so I actually have slightly different questions. So it looks like uh, the project also forks the container D repo, uh, and there are some additional commits in the container D fork. So can you talk about why that is needed and if there is a way that these changes can actually be moved to the container D project itself? Uh, you mean why? Why? Do I have to uh, be an independent project rather than be under the community, right? Uh, no. So like in the Quasar GitHub org, there is a container D fork, like the repo. I added it in the chat, the link. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, we have a fork of the container D, right? Yeah. So like, can you talk about why that is needed? And uh, yeah. that, that is actually because... Uh, uh, that's actually because um, as we have uh, proposed this uh, uh, sandbox or plugin uh, uh, feature uh, feature request, but uh, our codes are, uh, do not merge into the Canada D. So it's it's in the Canada uh, 2.0 milestone, but the code is still not merged. So uh, we have to fork a, a Canada D to uh, to 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 support this uh, sandbox or architecture. Uh, yes. Got it. Um... Akhil, uh, you're also on this call. You're like involved in the Containery community. Do you know if this can be pushed uh, to get merged soonish? Because I also ask this because we typically try not to bring in sandbox projects that are forking other CNCF projects. So it would be ideal if you're importing Containery directly and instead of modifying the project itself. But uh, it's pretty, it's great that you're contributing back to the project. But uh, Akhil, you also have this call. Do you know if this can yeah. be good? So uh, this Quasar was like once, the Sandboxer plugin was like once demo to the Container D community meeting. So uh, I think like the PR is still open and is like currently under review uh, for it. So yeah, that's why like it's in the uh, milestone for 2.0. So it, it should be in, yeah. I think your question is, uh, you know, whether this project can be part of the container D or it should be an independent sandbox project. I think the question is whether why don't you, you know, um, make this um, be part of the container D? Maybe, you know, Abel, you can clarify, you can explain that. Mm. Yeah, 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 maybe it can be a, 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 a... A project under the container D, but uh, uh, as uh, I think we have made a, 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 a new framework of the sandbox. So uh, actually, it's like the color containers is a unique uh, project. So maybe uh, we have two choices, but uh, we choose to, we choose the, this uh, unique uh, uh, project as a, as a independent, as independent board project. Yes. Um, I think, uh, it, it, could you go to your the architecture slide? The architecture slide, you know? Could you show the slide? Architecture? Uh, you mean yeah, the, yeah the, um, this one, yeah. OK. Um, I think probably is it because, you know, you are not just, uh, um, you also have, yeah, you mentioned you have the framework. Um, mm. You also provide the set box, uh, um, sandbox API and some are. Uh, is that could that API be part of the um content? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering. Oh, yeah. I want, with, I want this uh, AP, uh, sandbox API to be a specification, not just for the container D, maybe 
uh, we already support uh, run the containers in the uh, D, which is a uh, open source uh, container engine like in container D. And maybe in the future, uh, we can support running it uh, in the in the Creo. So uh, so maybe it's not just the container D project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense. Um, are, are, you, are you also like planning to support other WASM runtimes in the future? Uh, yeah, uh, we now currently uh, we have support of the this uh, WASM match and the WASM time maybe in the future. Uh, uh, some new uh, WASM runtime will be supported like WASMR and it's also in my uh, uh, in our roadmap uh, 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 here. Uh, Maybe you can add more uh, wasm runtimes in the future. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, is the wasm time implementation merged? So the readme mentions wasm time is supported, um, but is it in the roadmap or has it been merged? Uh, actually, uh -huh. yes, uh, we, we said that this is in the roadmap, but uh, we have uh, proposed the code. It's just uh, uh, the code is do does not uh, uh, merged into the mainstream. Okay. It, uh, yeah. But, uh, and I had one final question. Um, so there's a maintainers.md file in the repo, which lists a lot of maintainers from different companies. But when I look at the number of contributors, it's not a lot of the contributors. So how are you defining these maintainers? Because this will be like an important question when the project is reviewed for uh, joining the sandbox. Uh... Sorry, uh, oh, I don't quite get you mean. Uh, uh, so like if you go to the repo, uh, if, uh, the Quasar GitHub repo. This, uh, you, yes. Uh, so there is a maintainers.md file. Uh, the maintainers.md file. So that lists a, a significant amount of maintainers. Yes, that one. Uh, but when you look at the GitHub contributors, like the contributors who have actually committed code to the project, all of these people have not committed code. So how are these maintainers defined? Because that would be a question that would be- uh, Yeah, actually, uh, this is actually, the, uh, they have merged the codes before the, uh, we, we uh, uh, put the codes in the, the GitHub. So we have to make the maintainers, otherwise the, 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 their contributions, we cannot see the contribution of them, <laughs> yes. Got it. Actually, that's why we, we uh, that's why that they are that different uh, in the list contributor list and the maintainer list. Okay, got it. Thank you. The, the, the question is, uh, would those maintainers, would they continue contributing to these projects? Uh, yes, of course. Um, oh, let me see. Um, uh, I can uh, list of these uh, uh, contributor uh, uh, maintainers and. They actually have a uh, uh, have some. Uh, all of them have a, uh, a specific field of the uh, what uh, what they do for the sandboxer. Uh, so uh, for this uh, uh, second state, they they, they do the uh, web assembly uh, part of the uh, Quasar, and uh, for Huawei, we make uh, we make the, the the core framework and the, the micro VM. And for you, uh, Open Europe, it, it focuses uh, the work on the uh, support of the Isula D and uh, the the Strat World micro VM. And for Agriculture Bank of China, we and they had uh, you contribute some codes of the core framework and the, and the, some and the, some uh, uh, testing and uh, 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 the Quarksoft is uh, the, the main uh, this this uh, I main Quarksoft it focuses work on the uh, uh, ABB kernel uh, sandboxer, which is uh, actually we are using the Quark as this uh, as its implementation. Yeah, I have some questions on the on the slide. Could you go? Uh, could you show the slide again? I forgot okay. which one. Yeah. So uh, we. Uh, I think it's on the use case. The the last few. The use okay. case. Okay. This one or this one? Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. Okay. This one. So this yeah. one. The when here it says uh, it, you you know you can integrate with the uh, the Watson function, right? And it's yeah. mentioned before some the Watson function running as a container here. Does this Watson yeah. function running also inside a container, like which for the Watson age, or is it like that or no? Or just it's just a function, it's just a parses. Uh, 
Uh, actually, okay, I, I think it's a, it, it's, a fu it's a function running in container as a container. Actually, um, you, you just uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the container image contains a uh, actually the contains only the the uh, was a module fires actually. So uh, awesome. yes, uh, it's not they it have to rely on this. Uh, uh, all these container D and Quasar and the Kubernetes things. Uh, they have okay. the port and the container de definition, yes. Okay, I see. Okay, for the next slide, could you go to the next slide? Okay. Okay, for this one, you see the, the strongly isolated by, you know, hypervisors. Hypervisor is for micro VM, right? And then yes. Wasa and then app container. So for the uh, app kernel, app kernel sandbox, what is the isolation? What isolation mechanism is used? Uh, this is actually uh, uh, the isolation. Like it's like uh, the, the 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 divisor implementation. It's actually uh, for, so, uh, yeah for for the quark for the for divisor. It has a uh, uh, some kind of different uh, 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 isolation uh, way. They have different ways to do the isolation. Maybe they can do the isolation by the the P trace or do the isolation by the KVM. And for Quark, actually, they, they only have one way to to do the isolation. It's uh, it's actually also use the KVM. It's like the hypervisor. You just uh, uh, make make they made a, 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 a small kernel and uh, they um, just uh, make the code the kernel code and the hypervisor code. Uh, 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 make uh, make uh, put them together to to make this uh, uh, improvement of the uh, performance. Yeah. Okay. So how about the the Watson one? The Watson one. What you what isolation? Because you mentioned before, if it's running Watson age, you can use a C group, right? But if not, you, you cannot. So what is this? Uh, actually, uh, uh, the resource restriction is uh, is a uh, part of the isolation. Yes, they we. We may use C group to do it, but uh, actually, uh, the more uh, the more thing about the security or the isolation is the is that uh, uh, whether the, the code running inside this container can can uh, um, do some access of the uh, resources outside the host. Uh, actually, for the web because uh, because first it's a, a redesign of the architecture, so uh, the the. the uh, uh, what about what I say that, that the the code the the the, the uh, bottom layer of the code is already limited because they don't have the, any uh, uh, they don't have any way to uh, access outside of the uh, on, on the host and they it has a, a capability based security so that anything any files that they want to access first they need to be uh, opened first and. Uh, they can only get it, they only they only when they can get this uh, uh, file descriptors of the uh, uh, files they can access the file so that uh, uh, this makes it uh, uh, much secure than the uh, the containers of run C I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you. One last quick quick question. Just sort of curiosity is like what are the biggest adopter of the sandbox API right now, like the container is, are there other major adopters of the sandbox API as well? Uh, sandbox API, yeah, I think actually uh, the sandbox API and the, the implementation of the sandbox API, I think they are all under uh, development, uh, development because this uh, uh, sandbox API, I think they are not, uh, they are still not stable. So, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe we can feature. say that this is the biggest project. <laughs> yes, the Sandbox API is still the uh, experimental feature in Kentucky. Some uh, some of uh, uh, the projects like Kata uh, want to implement, but it's haven't finished. Maybe we, we are the first one to to make, to give a complete uh, Sandbox API implementations. That is pretty cool. So, uh, so c c should the Tianyang start uh, show the demo of this uh, user adoption, uh, the CC Turbo Farm Cloud? Yes. Okay, I will. I will give up this uh, share of screen. This meeting is being recorded. 
Uh, yes, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, yeah. Before my demonstration, I'd like to explain uh, the maintainer of Quisa. Uh, as you see, uh, before we make uh, Quisa public, we have a lot of uh, uh, contributors internal. In 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 the uh, in the not the in, not in the GitHub repository, we are in the other Git repository to de develop it. Uh, so when we make it a pub public public, uh, the first commit you can see is only uh, one contributor. Uh, actually, we have uh, some other uh, internal uh, contributors. Okay, let's start our demonstration. Uh, I'm gonna to show you how we how we do sandbox collocation by applying Quasar in Cloud Container Engine service of Huawei Cloud. In this demonstration, I'm gonna to create three deployments. First is a CentOS run C container. Second is a Nginx VML sandbox container. And the last is a WebSummary HTTP server container. Firstly, this is the console page of Cloud Container Engine service from Huawei Cloud. We already have a Kubernetes cluster. And we have a node, a computer node. And as you yeah, can uh, see... Could you show the, could you show the node first? Oh, yes, yes, from this page. Yes, uh, and I'm you sorry, can see... Sorry, uh, we don't see... So we don't see the, the, the page of the, the node. node. This one. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and we do not have any workload now. Uh, please note that notice that this is uh, on our developer uh, environment, not our production environment. Let's go to the backend computing node. Uh, we uh, we have a connect we have a Kennedy service and uh, sorry uh, uh, the the the, the backend the, uh, the screen is not do not show that the back the the backend of the on the node have you uh, looked sorry, on I'll, I will try again this meeting is being recorded. Yes, can we see the screen? Oh, it's black. Ah, oh, sorry, let me check it. And how about this? Oh, it's still black. <laughs> Uh, still back? Black. In the worst case, maybe if you try this, but if this doesn't work, you could uh, like maybe have a recording of the demo and then maybe even add it to the sandbox application that might help. Can you? Wow. So why why can you share the the screen of uh, of the website? But this meeting is being recorded. So only the, the website. Wow. Okay, all right.
Oh, okay. While we try to figure out the demo, I also had a couple of questions about uh, one of them being uh, the start of curiosity. Um, you mentioned the Wasm sandboxer in Wasm. Um, was that sorry? Uh, how does it? Um, Okay, it's, it's just a demonstration of the the effect of the, that uh, we can run the, the, the multiple sandbox containers in, on the same host actually. Uh, um, if it, uh, if Tianyang can share the screen, maybe we can post this. Okay, we we have a demo video on the internet, uh, and okay. I can share share the link. Sorry. So uh, you can you uh, send the, the website URL of the uh, video? Maybe I can. Uh... You can find the video on the website quiza dot io. Okay. Uh, Rajas, did you also have a question? Yeah. Uh, so, so again, I, I'll try to rephrase my question. So uh, I, I wanted to know what is, how does the WASM sandbox in Quasar relate to something like a run WASI implementation in container? Uh, yeah, actually run WASI. Yeah, we have, uh, we also have seen that this project of run WASI and actually uh, I think run uh, I actually I think Ramwazi has the uh, um, uh, has the same uh, architecture for what we have done actually, uh, but it has defined a set of the APIs uh, internal as the as the sandbox actually. Uh, so, um, but what we don't want to do actually, we want to make a, a unified sandbox uh, API so that it can not only uh, support the WebAssembly, but we also it can support the microEM and other sandboxes. Uh, so, but but for the uh, Ramwazi, we can see that uh, they they have the sandbox definition in their uh, internal architecture, but uh, I think it's not uh, uh, universal. Yeah. Got it. And and a related question to this. Uh, so so you mentioned that uh, there's no standard defined for the Wasm OCI artifacts as of now, but there's related work going on in run Wasi as well. So would it make sense to collaborate on that and come up to a standard? Uh, sorry, sorry, I don't quite get uh, the question. So uh, could you uh, make it make a detailed description of what this question? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you had mentioned that the WASM OCI artifacts, uh, yeah. the WASM sandboxer for uh, Quasar, it's it's not defined along a standard, right? A long stand, a longer standard. Like uh, it is not defined along like a standard implementation. Like there's no standard followed for Wasm. Oh OCI. yeah, yes, yes, yes. So so there's a similar effort going on in Run Wasi where the OCI artifacts of Wasm are getting defined. Would it make sense to like find like collaborate on that aspect and like maybe come up with a standard? Mm, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, I don't know if we can um, push this uh, to to make it a standard. Uh, currently, we are we are we are we want to make this uh, sandbox API uh, 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 at least uh, 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 the the sandbox the the sandboxer plugin uh, uh, plugin a container D. Uh, to make it at least a standard in the Canada D, and uh, maybe uh, in the future we can uh, uh, make it a, a, a uh, the standard to to the uh, uh, was Wasm uh, community. Got it. I've, I've posted some related links on a similar effort happening in Canada D, uh, especially in the Run Wasi project. So it may make sense to go over that as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the presentation, Abel. And I think, well, so we've decided to put the demo in the sandbox application, right? So, uh, Tian, could you, can you, can you, can you make this demonstration, can you make this demonstration or not? 
uh, sorry, I have sent a URL of a Quizstar demo video on the chat book. Okay. Oh. Uh. Do we need to, uh, to to play this video? Okay. Maybe uh, you I can. Uh, yeah, well, maybe you can uh, watch the video after the meeting. Yes, we can. We can link it in the the meeting notes. I'll add add it to the agenda notes, and we'll also if you can link it in the sandbox application as Nikita had mentioned, that'd be great. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so uh, so maybe I uh, can share my screen to finish this, uh, finish our, our slides. Yep, sounds good. Okay. So this is our, our roadmap, and uh, uh, after the pronunciation uh, of uh, pr open source in April, we have uh, made uh, uh, the core framework, the Rust library of Sandbox, and it's always support run Sandboxes. Uh, uh, in Canada D and the Isla D, and uh, we have made some sandboxes based on hypervisors and APP kernel and the WebAssembly. And in the few uh, in the next uh, few months in this year, and I, I think we will um, make a complete uh, core framework and uh, su add support of the newly added uh, interfaces related to containers like the RNI or CDI or something. And we are, uh, we, did, we did not support the C group B2, and we have the support of it and. Uh, uh, we need to support the task event of the container D. It's, it's not event right now, and um, and we will add some uh, more sandboxes uh, based on uh, some existing uh, uh, technique like uh, five five cracker or wasm time uh, or, or, or wasm there. Uh, and we want, also want to build some new forms of sandboxes. Maybe um, uh, uh, for example, we want to make a uh, EPP have enhanced run C. Sandboxer uh, with EBPF, we may uh, make a, a, a enhance the security of RunC, and maybe also with uh, EBPF, we can uh, uh, remove the shim process of the RunC container, like what we do for the other sandboxers. And also, we want to make a, a confidential computing sandboxer. And in the next year, I think we will focus on our work on the security and maintainability and. Uh, we will add the security, enhance the security of the sandboxer based on uh, on the RSM uh, of Linux, and uh, we will add some CRI tools for the sandbox uh, operation. Uh, so this is our roadmap. And uh, anyone is interested in our project, please join us uh, through these ways. And so th th these are the uh, slides that uh, I share. And any questions? Any more questions? Well, I have one question. Uh, in one of the slides, like uh, I think the eighth one, you mentioned about like a VMM sandboxer process. Uh, VMM sandboxer? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. This one. So, is it like this process is like common for the entire host for all the sandbox, or is it like? Per sandbox, like you will have one VMM. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, I, I as I said in this uh, uh, slides that a sandbox is actually a uh, 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 is for the lifecycle and resource management for a kind of sandbox. So, so for the VMM sandbox, uh, we it will uh, uh, manage the the all the micro VM based sandboxes. So a single process is running on the host and it will. Uh, uh, Launch and uh, stop the uh, all of the VMs, uh, virtual machines uh, uh, related to uh, an, any sandboxes. Okay, so uh, can we call this like a shim layer then? Uh, yeah, it, maybe it's like a, a single shim. Uh, so so maybe yeah. you can also make a, a single shim for all the ports running on the host, but. Uh, I think it, it also has some something uh, uh, different because, uh, as we said that uh, in this uh, slide, uh, the model is like this currently. So uh, we have we need a shim, the shim process started by the Canadian D, and Canadian D will call the task API to the shim process. So um, actually, uh, as in our design, I think uh, a sandbox is itself can expose the task API. So we don't need uh, the Canadian D to define what form of this. Uh, 
uh, sandbox is. So maybe it do not need the shim process. So uh, so it can call the uh, API directly to the uh, API server running inside the the, 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 the the sandbox. So we don't need the shim process to to do the API conversion. But for the uh, current situation of the shim, we need to we need this shim process to do this pro proxying, and uh, and this uh, shim process is the is the carry of the both sandbox API and the task API. But for our design, I think this is uh, we make the uh, make it cleaner uh, uh, that uh, the sandbox is responsible for the sandbox API and the sandbox itself is for the uh, task API. Okay, so the task API will be going via the shim layer and the sandbox API will be like separate. Uh, yeah, the sandbox API is uh, for is uh, exposed by the single process of this uh, VMS sandboxer and. Uh, the task API is actually exposed uh, as in oh. a process running inside the water machine. Uh, the process, the first process running inside the water machine, and it can only can, can actually connect it into it uh, through the units, also through the unit storm socket or VSOC. So, so we can actually call call it directly into this uh, this this process running inside. So why why do we need this uh, shim process to do the, the the API conversion? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a quick time check. We're almost on top of the hour, so if there are any more questions, maybe we can take them on Slack, I guess, on the Tech Round yes. channel. Yeah. But thanks for the great presentation. This is amazing. And thank, and thank you. Thank you all very much for, for this uh, meeting. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining. This was like a one-off background time meeting out of our bi-weekly tables. So thank you for making it. And yep, yeah, I'll see you all around on Slack. Bye. See you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.